we're now going to be setting up our Unreal scene to stream body, face, and finger data onto one, one metahuman. Um, first thing you'll see is me setting up the body. You'll then see Kat setting up the face, and then at the very end, we're going to merge everything together. So step one is enabling the LiveLink MVN plugin. When you enable, you have to restart the project. Um, because I'm superstitious, I like to go back and confirm that it's enabled. At that point, I go back into MVN to set up my network streamer. So here comes master technique number four. When you add a stream in the network streamer of MVN, the default settings are preset for Unreal. So all you have to do is press add and then check that little box that's next to stream one. If you want to change the name to Unreal, you can, but it doesn't really um, make all that much of a difference. So now I'm adding the XN's live source. That green circle tells me that data is being streamed into Unreal. So now I can navigate to the base skeleton of the MetaHuman so that I can make my remap asset. So there's my skeleton. I'm going to right click, go up to XN's, choose create remap asset. So before I actually start filling in these joints, I'd like to create an animation composite to then start building my T-pose. So animation composite, I'm going to choose my base skeleton. I'm going to rename it, open it up, and start working on my T-pose. Now, the way I make my T-pose is nearly one-to-one -one, um, with the way Gabriella or Feeding Wolves on YouTube builds her T-pose for the XMs data. By the way, huge, huge shout out and thank you to Gabriella. This webinar never would have happened without her support. Um, in my professional opinion, I think Gabriella has developed the best standard method for setting up a T-pose for the MetaHumans rig. Um, and I highly, highly recommend subscribing to her YouTube channel. Um, it's called Feeding Wolves. You know, even though I work for XSENS and I'm the product specialist, like she has taught me so much about our own tools. And I just, um, I am so grateful. So in the, the process of building a T-Pose, in our documentation, you will see that it says, make sure that the, the, the skeleton is in a perfectly straight T-Pose facing the X axis. But what I have learned working with Gabriella is that there is a very specific order of operations that matters when it comes to building this T-pose. So here comes master technique number five. When you start building the T-pose, change the upper arms first with the skeleton facing positive Y. So you zero out those upper arms, right? Then rotate the skeleton 90 degrees so that the T-pose is facing positive X then for all of the joints that you edit or zero out after that, um, you, you want to zero out all of the rotations set to local, something I forgot to mention. Um, initially, when you set the upper arms, you want the rotation set to world. That's, that's huge, that's really important. So you set the upper arms, you zero out the rotation set to world, right? Rotate, um, T-pose is facing positive X, then with all of the other joints after that, the rotations are set to local, and you're editing the lower arms, the hands, the thighs, the calves, the feet, and all the finger joints, including the metacarpals, and that's what you see me doing here. The other thing that you probably noticed um, in the process of me zeroing out everything, like I am literally um, adding zero to X, Y, and Z. I'm just gonna pause this really quick so I can make this note. Um, with each of the different joints, when I'm zeroing out the X, Y, and Z, you will notice that specific joints, whether that's like a right upper arm or like a left thigh, um, after you zero everything out, sometimes for the X value, you have to put positive 180. Or like for the hands, for example, you have to go to the Z value and put um, negative 90. That way, you know, I know you guys can't see my T-pose right now, but everything is symmetrical and totally straight. So here's my hand, everything is um, straightened out. I can now create my T-pose that my remap asset will reference. Sweet, so now I am back in the remap asset. Um, this trick is really cool. For those of you who have been, um, who are experts in our plugin for Unreal, you know how tedious this step can be, right? You have this list of segments and then you have to click on the drop down menu for every single segment and then assign a joint that that segment is driving. Um, this trick is really cool because since the base skeleton for the metahumans is the same across the board, you only have to do this process once where you go joint by joint. 
then what you can do is you can actually save your remap asset, paste it to a notepad file, and then, sorry, yeah, paste it to a notepad, uh, notepad file, and then copy and paste it to another remap asset for a different character that you're working on. Um, I do want to mention, though, with the release of 427, our plugin isn't out just yet. But when our plugin for 427 is released, um, it's going to have a very flexible naming convention. So you can use the naming convention, the standard naming convention for Unreal. So that filling in these joints is super fast and easy and user friendly. So you're going to see me paste um, all the assignments right now. Cool. So right now I'm just checking all of the different joints. Not streaming any props right now, so that's why those say none. But you can see all of the uh, the finger joints as well here in the remap asset. Cool. Then up here I'm going to reference the T pose that we just built together. Compile, save, 